Thanks very much, Matthew. Um, yes, uh, as, as you say, I'm hot foot, uh, not necessarily fresh, uh, off the plane from Washington this morning. So, um, um, uh, and, and obviously, you've all watched the, ama the amazing scenes uh, of the last 48 hours, just as I did in, in uh, DC on Tuesday night. Wasn't able to get to sleep, because, partly because it was so exciting, but also because of the noise. <laughs> it was like being in Italy. <laughs> amazing. I've never, ne never experienced anything like it in, in, an, uh, in uh, Washington, which normally goes to bed at about 8 p.m. Um, but enough of, uh, of me. Um, I'll introduce each of the speakers as, as, uh, uh, as they come up in turn. And I'm going to start uh, by asking Stefan Halper to uh, perhaps to defend his uh, prediction, but also to, uh, talk about the, to talk about the results. Stefan is the director of the Donna <laughs> Atlantic Studies Program at Cambridge University. And he's a former advisor in the uh, Republican administrations uh, of Nixon, Ford, and Ronald Reagan. Um, and uh, he had lots of really interesting things to say when we met in February, and I'm sure he's got uh, maybe some changes to offer and some new thoughts, but equally interesting, Stefan. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to rise to the bait. Um, I think that certainly uh, when we met in February, we had uh, reason to, to ask who, who was likely to win this election, and it looked a lot like uh, a very, very tight race, and McCain, of course, seemed to have a, a more uh, experienced campaign staff. Uh, but a lot of things happened on the way to the bank. Uh, the interesting thing is that the country itself has come through an incredibly difficult decade. You had the impeachment of Clinton, you had the recount in Florida in 2000, two wars, economic collapse, uh, and, of course, Mr. Bush, who has squandered a remarkable opportunity uh, in the last eight years, um, surrendering moral authority and global, global status. Uh, so it's been a very tough go. And what Obama was able to present, it seems to me, in this campaign was a highly focused uh, and virtually flawless campaign in terms of management, message, staff, and impact. And his message was clear, it was change. And change was very much a wind, as he said, a righteous wind at his back. And how this skinny guy with a funny name and an exotic background managed to overcome all of that to present America with a, an opportunity for renewal, rediscovery, reinvention, this is one of those stories that comes along once in a generation. Was the McCain campaign, uh, did they lose it? Which is, of course, a question uh, on, the, on the table. It was, a, it was a difficult campaign. There were difficulties within the staff. Uh, the candidate was erratic. Uh, there were specific incidents, as in the time when they suspended the campaign, when they selected Sarah Palin. Um, when, 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 when there were other difficulties that one could say this campaign was not as clear and as compelling as it could have been. I would um, just add <clears throat> that as we, met, as we enter this transition period, expectations are very high, uh, and the prospect of delivery are not nearly as good as people think. This is an administration hampered by uh, limited funds and a large portion of the electorate, particularly white and male, which are not on board with this new administration. You can see it in the voting statistics, which we'll discuss, I think, a little later. Uh, it doesn't mean they can't be drawn to this uh, process, but Obama has to govern from the middle. And I would just say, that selecting Rahm Emanuel as the White House Chief of Staff is probably not the best first step. And I'll end it there. Thank you very much, Stefan. Um, next, uh, I'm going to turn to uh, Stryker Maguire. Stryker was for many years the London Bureau Chief of Newsweek. He's 
uh, now been elevated to even more exalted status within the magazine as a contributing editor. Um, he is at least as familiar with Britain as he is with the United States. He's a great uh, uh, observer of both countries and in a terrific position to make comparisons. Um, but I don't know what he's going to say. Uh, but now's the chance to find out. Well, the first thing I would say is, is uh, we were reminded of our predictions as uh, just now, and and it's this is one prediction that I'm pretty happy to be have been wrong about. The fact that my prediction was that McCain would win narrowly. I think it's you know part of it is that a lot of time has passed since then. It was it was actually a very different moment. Uh, we're going back to. Uh, a period right after Super Tuesday. Uh, at the time, of course, uh, Obama and Hillary Clinton were running neck and neck, uh, uh, and it was, it was quite a remarkable battle. Also at the time, uh, the McCain, who was, uh, who was the apparent nominee, uh, was actually quite a different McCain from the McCain at the very end of the, of the campaign. And so I think two, two things happened, at least from my perspective, sitting way over here. One was, uh, as Stefan has just said, the, the Obama choreography uh, was just superb. I mean, the way the campaign evolved over time and the way we came to know uh, Obama over time was quite remarkable, uh, beautifully choreographed, and uh, ending, I think, with the magnificent bit of choreography of the, that huge scene in, in Chicago on Tuesday night with the largest crowd uh, that had ever, you know, uh, greeted him before during the campaign. And from the convention onward, the convention at the end of August onward, uh, I kept thinking, you know, when is he going to, when's he going to let go? When are we going to see... Uh, you know, the, 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 the fiery orator. Uh, and of course, we didn't see that because, because he needed to be cool and calm. He was appealing to a fairly narrow band within the American electorate. Uh, a, a black candidate in America uh, simply, uh, for worse, obviously, does not have the right to behave in the same way as an America, as a white candidate in America has to be more restrained so as not to be accused of, of, of sort of, you know, being uppity. Uh, and it was, and I think that his demeanor was incredibly reassuring. Meanwhile, uh, after the Republican National Convention, I think that it was apparent to all of us watching that, that, that John McCain was really just falling apart, and so was his campaign. And he became uh, almost a caricature of the, of the, angry, uh, uh, the angry John McCain that we had been told about. And uh, I think it was partly because he was forced uh, to select a vice presidential candidate he wasn't entirely comfortable with, uh, but I also think it was because he was, he was, that's his, that's the way he is. And in the end, uh, I think that helped people make the decision between a cool, calm, collected, presidential seeming individual and somebody who just seemed to be somebody from another place and time. Thanks, Stryker. <coughs> um, I'm very much reminded of uh, the comment that Obama made at, the, at Denver at the convention uh, in uh, whenever it was August. You know, when he said, um, "Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy to have a debate about temperament uh, and who is temperamentally ready to be president." Um, and I think, you know, what you said absolutely uh, bears that out. Candice Allen. Uh, on the end of the panel here um, is a writer, uh, a novelist, though she's, as she rather <laughs> charmingly says here, she's put her novel uh, on, uh, on the back burner for the last year. And the reason for that is known to all of us who know her, which is that she's been fantastically active both here and in the States on the, in the Obama campaign, uh, a, a 
a tremendous source of information uh, and contacts on that, uh, in that, for that campaign for, so, for, for some of us. And um, she has the added uh, uh, allure of having been right. Uh, Candice. Actually, it's, uh, it's not a year. I, I decided to um, support, actively support Barack from the 10th of February uh, of, last year, of last year. I decided that he was not, not going to be president because of something I didn't do. And so it has been 21 months, and I must say I am tired. Um, <laughs> when I made my prediction in, uh, after Super Tuesday, uh, which was that um, I thought that Barack would win if, if he got the nomination. This was after I had spent a week in New Hampshire. And, uh, and also, w I spent 20 years organizing, uh, running film sets in Hollywood, so I do know something about organization. And I was already just completely flabbergasted by the level of organization within the Obama campaign. And here, we had had Iowa, I was in New Hampshire. Yes, we lost New Hampshire, but I was around a lot of white people who were making a move. And I was feeling, and then we had Super Tuesday, and this thing that was designed for, for anybody who had the presumption to think that they were going to challenge Hillary Clinton, there was no way they would have the money and the organization to do 23 states at once. And the Obama campaign stayed neck and neck. Uh, in April, I went, back, I went back to the States again, and I spent a week outside of Philadelphia working uh, on the ground in that, before that primary. And that, at that point, I became, things had turned uglier. You know, the, the Clintons had pulled the race card out of their, out of its, you know, unfortunate box, and uh, they had mismanaged their uh, African-American uh, support, and so things were getting very, very polarized. And I became very aware of that America, these, these things that I, that I had thought uh, might possibly more be looser, the binds that I, of, of the American character and history that I thought might be looser was still very, very tight, and although um, my my commitment did not diminish one iota. I did not know, I did not allow myself to think, regardless of what the indications were, that, as I said, I wrote a, very, I wrote a long article on the, the challenge that Barack Obama presented to the American uh, electorate for a German publication. And um, that in translation, the title was Obama's uh, I said, what, what Barack Obama asked of, uh, of, the, of the United States. Uh, their title was Obama's Tsumutung, uh, which is Obama's presumption. And it, it, it was, we were continually confronted with the fact that this, the notion that this eminently able, intelligent, gracious, charismatic uh, candidate, for him to think that he was equal to the task of uh, leading all the people was a presumption. And at the end of the article, I said, uh, will America vote for, for its future or with its past? And until Tuesday night, I did not know for sure that this was going. I had hope, and certainly as the, you know, absolutely the, the September, October surprise of, of of global financial meltdown was an unfortunate gift, yes, to the Obama campaign because you had somebody who had never changed his personality, who, who went from the very beginning when people were trying to say, oh, you've got to be, you have to be angry or you have to be feisty or you have to get down and dirty. He knew who he was, he did not shape shift and he was centered and you saw uh, somebody who was 25 years his, his senior, who was acting kind of like an ADHD 10-year-old, whereas he was ca cautious, reasoned, and yes, presidential. But still, as I, as I watched this, I said, and I'm seeing all this Bill Ayers, is he a Muslim, you know, is he a socialist, all of that. Is the United States going to follow the old politics? The majority didn't. 
it's a wonderful thing. It's not, the, it's not a 180 transformation, but a step has been made, and it's something to be celebrated. Thank you, Candice. Thank you very much. Um, I just before we uh, throw it open, which uh, I'm not trying to delay doing at all, um, I just wondered whether um, any of the panel ha wanted to draw any particular lessons out of actually what happened on Tuesday on the ground, you know, the, the results, the, the, the voting figures, the results in particular states amongst particular demographic groups uh, and, and, and so on, because we haven't really talked much about that. So just briefly, um, okay. I, I, run down the panel again in the same order. There are some very interesting statistics for those of you who uh, are not up on them at this moment. Um, of the Bo Obama voters, for example, 61% were white and 90% were black. Um, men uh, were 44% of Obama's support and 50% of McCain's support. And um, in terms of age, that's another interesting breakout, 52% of people under 45 supported Obama and 42% over 45. And the income breakouts, I'm sure you can imagine, uh, they favored Obama voters were 42% of those under 50,000 and 32% for McCain. So, Essentially, what you have is a block of, um, of white, male, affluent voters. I say affluent, I mean 50,000 isn't that much these days, but um, that is a group which is still sort of tentative and still looking at this. And that's why I say early signs of the Obama uh, administration in terms of personnel choice are very, very important. I would, I would just, I guess, point two things out, it's, uh, and only two, so that we can kind of open it up. But in, in addition to what Stefan was just uh, pointing out, at least according to the exit polls that I was looking at yesterday, if, if only whites had been able to vote in the United States on Tuesday, the McCain would have, would have won, which is, uh, it, so when people talk about how far we have come, uh, you know, you, you, I think it's worth pointing that out. Uh, the answer is we've got a long way to go. The second thing is, which I thought was interesting, uh, given Obama's uh, tax policies and the, the attacks on his policies by the Republicans asserting that he was a socialist, which I think sitting over here we all found incredibly funny, uh, but that voters o making over $200,000 in the United States in fact voted uh, uh, more for Obama than for McCain, which I thought was interesting. I'm, go I'm going to tell you right now that in terms of policy uh, intricacies of um, within and exterior of Washington. I know nothing compared to the other people sitting at this, at, at this dais. Um, my, uh, my experience is uh, philosophical and uh, practical um, in terms of the campaign itself. And the thing that is an extraordinary achievement, and the, uh, Barack Obama would not have won without taking a completely revolutionary approach to uh, campaign organization and fundraising. It would have been impossible. And this, this organization, which came directly from his, his, community, his own community org organization uh, of career, right after he came out of undergraduate college, uh, suffuse the entire operation. And so this mobilization of people of all ages, but particularly the young, the, uh, the, in, the IT expertise, which was, for an example, in February, they, there was a report that I started seeing Obama advertisements on uh, different websites that I visit. And there was a report, I think, in politico.com that in the month of February, the Obama campaign had 
put something like $700,000 into these advertisements up to that point, whereas in the Hillary campaign had done 325 and the uh, McCain campaign had done 125. You know, by the end, by the last three weeks, there was a, an advert f for early voting that appeared in an internet, an online computer game. I don't know which one it was. It has, it's about cars crashing or something. But they had paid for the space, and this continued. Uh, in, at the Iowa caucus, Terry McAuliffe, who was the former chair of the of Democratic National Committee and was the, the co-chair of Hillary Clinton's campaign, comes into Iowa, looks around and sniffs, these people look like Facebook. Well, yes, but they, all of them could vote. And also, Chris Hughes, one of the um, original designers of Facebook, was a very early Obama hire. And this just... It's is going to, it has changed the face of, of political campaigning in the United States, certainly. And I think people all over the world are looking at this. And I actually, I went to a conference on opera and society uh, a few weeks ago and was talking to the director of Scottish opera about using some of the Obama camp um, uh, approach to getting small uh, donors involved for their opera company. It is an amazing thing. And to connect what uh, Stryker said and what Candice said, I mean, the fact is that amongst white men under the age of 35, um, Obama did win. Uh, young white men uh, voted uh, for Obama. Um, uh, white men of, uh, dare I say it, our generation uh, didn't. Um, I'd like to just throw in one statistic, which I thought was very interesting from the exit polling, and that is that if you look at the, um, the Obama, uh, the Obama um, McCain breakdown uh, amongst the broadly defined uh, r racial groups in America, by and large, Obama did a little better with uh, whites in general than John Kerry had din done. He, he, you know, he, he did better. Um, he did a bit better amongst uh, black voters uh, than Kerry had done. I mean, he pushed up what was, I think 89% uh, of blacks voted for Kerry, 95% uh, voted for Obama. But the big change was among Hispanic voters. And if you look at the, the, the uh, figures there, you will see that the, uh, the Hispanic vote for Kerry, which from memory was, I think, 53 or 54%, uh, went to 66, 67 and that's a lot of people, and it's a lot of young people, and it's a very, it, 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 it's, it's a burgeoning demographic uh, in America, and America will become a majority Hispanic uh, nation within this century. And that shift away from the Republicans to the Democrats uh, this time amongst Hispanic voters, I think is really interesting and significant, and it may have contributed to the fact that uh, Obama's 50-state strategy worked so well in the West, uh, in states which were not of themselves vital to the Electoral College as it turned out, Nevada, New Mexico, Colorado, etc., uh, but which, you know, if they are now moving into the blue state category, and maybe Arizona too, and ultimately Texas, which is a big prize, but I think at this rate, you know, within many of our lifetimes, Texas will, I think, vote Democratic for the, the same reason. That is a really big shift, a really, really interesting new development in American uh, politics.